<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Nelson's Corner, an informal look at various topics in C Sharp. In episode three, we're going to be continuing on with our discussion with Link. Joining us, of course, our host, Mr. Nelson LeKay. Nelson! Hey. All right. Also, we have joining, playing the role of student and doing an outstanding job <laughs> is Mr. Zach Parrish. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty darn good tonight. And I'm totally typecasted here. Your, uh, your referee, Jason Busby, just to keep things under control, keep these two from wanting to kill one another. No, actually, it, it hasn't been that bad. No, 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 no. Uh, I think a couple, Nelson's a couple of deer in headlight moments, but not yeah, too bad. Nelson's frustrations only come from, from Link and IntelliSense and, and, and Visual Studio wanting to do its own thing from time to time. So that's, that's not bad. But uh, it, uh, it's been an excellent couple of episodes, and, and I'll go ahead and throw this out real quick, and that is that we've only taken about a 20-minute break from episode two. So Zach hasn't had a chance to go and look over anything. No. So we're going to keep from uh, or prevent Zach looking like a deer in headlights by uh, headlights. Excuse me. I'm yeah, not, I'm I, actually, I don't get put on the spot quite so much this time around. Yeah, no, you can leave that open. Zach. Okay. Uh, I'm actually getting up, turning a fan off. That's why I was. Yeah, because it actually causes an interesting rhythm in the background. I mean, it is our life support system. So if we start gasping on this yeah, end this, of the this video. room when when the door is closed and the fans off this room, even with it being you know 40 degrees it's outside, very it gets warm. up to 90, 95. All the oxygen's gone, and we don't look too good. But um, yeah. So anyways, we're we're picking up about 20 minutes later. Nelson said, "Just let's do this. Let's keep right on going, and, and we're game." So with that, I'll just turn it on over to you, Nelson. All right. In this video, we're going to be talking about Link, finally. So what is Link? <laughs> Link stands for uh, Language Integrated Query. Mm -hmm. And Link is a collection of static or extension methods that is provided by .NET Framework that allow you to do operations on enumerables. Enumerables being a a any sort of collection or you know any sort of thing that can be walked over or enumerated right, or we, put. We or covered that in the first episode. Okay. And now you see why we talked about it. Exactly. It all starts to come together. So link is a bunch of extension methods that are applied on ienumerable t, so they can be used on anything that it, that implements ienumerable t, which includes list and array list and or array list. Implements I enumerable, not the generic version, but the the it's about adding that functionality on top of every collection so that you can perform these high level operations really succinctly and really quickly in your code. Okay. Can Is you give can you give a better like an actual example, or do you want to go ahead and just start putting something together for us? Because really, saying all that stuff sounds great. You just basically ratted off the greatest commercial for Link that has probably ever been recorded to video, but what can we do with it? Well, go ahead and delete all of this stuff from the previous episode. And I'm going to start off with a, with, uh, a, a an array of integers. So I'm going to call this array numbers. And it's going to be an implicitly typed array because I always implicitly type my variables. It's going to contain that. And something just came up. I hit the wrong key. So that's my bad. Resharper okay. barked at you. So let's say that we want to get all of the numbers that are greater than five. And we did this in the previous example, but let's do it with link and see how easy that is. Numbers dot. And now if you remember from the first VTM um, or, or uh, the first episode is that because we have this using system dot link, all of the extension methods that link provides are available to our program. If we were to take this out, we don't have any link. Right. There's no link in this array. But by adding it, just using system.link, we are importing all of these extension methods that are available to every single object that we have that extends from or implements IEnumerable. 
which includes an array, which is being implicitly created here. If you hover over this, you'll see, if you hover this over this correctly, you'll see it's a, a, an array of pins. Mm -hmm. So we go ahead and look at what it now provides. And you see it has all of these extension methods. You this is stuff. link. Are all these little guys that have that little symbol that denote that this is an extension method? Mm -hmm. That is what link does. And all of these operations can be performed on this object. And the one that I'm going to use in order to get all of the numbers that are greater than five, like the variable indicates, is I'm going to use where. And this is one of the most commonly used link extension methods. And it is a method that accepts a func of int bool, meaning a function or a delegate that takes an integer because we're operating on an integer list. If we're operating a, a, on an array of strings, it would, this would be a string okay. because of generics and type inference. So, and it returns a bool, and it's called predicate, just like in the previous example where I had the, uh, the filter method. So at this point, I'm going to pass in a lambda. So I'm going to do So essentially, I'm actually going to just pop that because I okay. will the same. OK, so what do you think that the output of this program will be, Zach? It should just be 6, 7, and 8. No, keep looking. Sure? Hang on. For each, I'm looking. I'm looking. All right, all right. All right. Results is going to store. It's going to go through all of our numbers and using a link statement, and you got a lambda inside of that, which is going to so as i goes into i is less than five because I can't read my less than and greater than symbols. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, and then it's going to store that for each item in the results. It's going to write that item, so that item would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And don't worry about the fact that I don't know my less than from my greater than. I also don't know my left from my right. It's just something I've had to deal with. But what I'm going to go uh, just a step further, can you uh, go ahead and bring back up the, uh, the tooltip that popped up a second ago for where? Uh, or the, yeah, that'll work right there. See how it's taking in that uh, the funk mm -hmm. int comma bool, and in the last episode, if you recall, Nelson said uh, we've we've got a bunch of these that are that are built in, but that very last thing, the bool, that is that's our return type mm -hmm. from from the funk. So when doing a a where, we're we're looking for a, a true or false scenario here, and so. When we say i goes to i less than five, it's it, as awesome. Nelson's typing it out now. Basically, we're doing this right here, and then we're just saying, yeah, return i less than five. So if i is less than five, it's going to return a true. Otherwise, it's going to return a false. So we are constructing a new enumerable that is going to contain the result of everything that was in numbers that's less than five. Zach, are you getting all picky? I'm just helping. <laughs> <laughs> but but does the, the, the language I'm using make sense there? It does, it does. And it's it's all based off of that um of what's what where is, is taken in there. It's all based off that lambda expression. Mm -hmm. And again the funk is just a delegate. So we can pass in any function that meets the requirements of that delegate and it'll work just as before right okay and one thing to point out is that when you were talking you in my last example i actually did exactly what you described i had a list and i looped over every item in that list and for every item that matched a predicate i stuffed it in another list and i returned it link does not actually work like that and that's something that you're going to have to realize because there's a lot of implications. And just to uh, bend your mind a little bit here, mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to do something kind of crazy. 
I'm going to go ahead and make this into a list int because I want to be able to uh, edit these values. And I'm going to use the same array initialization syntax that I had before. And it doesn't like that because I forgot my new operator and I forgot my semicolon. So this is a functionally equivalent. The only difference is now that I'm on a list mm -hmm. instead of an array, and I can actually edit values of a list as opposed to an array being an, uh, immutable. And see, here's the cool thing. List and array both extend or implement inumerable T. So this works just as it did before. There's no, the, you don't have to change anything because this is the exact same extension method being applied to I enumerable of int. And you went to do this yesterday. I, I wasn't paying close enough attention to the screen. Go ahead and control click on list again. And then, um, and you were right there at it. Yeah, just extend list and then extend base types. And there's where you can actually prove what it's uh, implementing and inheriting from. And if we looked at a system.array, you would see the same thing. Be sure it's the system. I've actually never looked at that very good. I know we will. So because these both, they both have it, link becomes available because link is just a bunch of extension methods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now again, I'm going to bend your mind a little bit. I'm going okay. to do. Now, what do you think the output? of this is going to be? Uh, should be one, two, three, three, and well, I say one, two, three, four, three is what I'm going to guess. Okay. And do you kind of understand why that might happen? Well, you've got, you've defined the list at the very top, which goes one, two, three, four, six. And then down from there, the only thing you're using link for in that, uh, I don't want to say second line, because it's actually line 13, but my brain, because of where it started reading, wanted to say second line at first. Uh, the only place you're using link really is just to determine what it is you're going to be plugging into the results. And you're, you're using a lambda with your link expression to single out all values from your items that are less than five. So those get stored in your results. Then... You're using, I'm guessing, another bit of functionality that comes along with link to add three in. Now, I'm just assuming that that gets added to the end of your list. That functionality he's using with add right there is actually functionality for the list. Okay. See, the, the little bit came up and, and went away so quick on the screen. I, I can okay. only just, there you go. All right. So that just comes to the list. Now, I, I'm assuming that just gets dropped right onto the end of the list. Right. But it, be, it gets dropped off on the end of this list. That's what I'm saying. The first list. Oh, what's up with this? Okay, all right. So, so ah, yeah, that's that's what it was. I lost track of which one we were adding it to. So, um, well, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I, so our first list would have been one, two, three, four, six, three. So then results becomes one, two, three, four, three because we we're not going to use the six because that's greater than five. Right. But what what, what I'm trying to uh, and you are correct in in saying that one, two, three, four, three. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that. This numbers is what can is results is this isn't a copy of numbers. Okay. And you originally said when you were when you were walking through this that you kind of assumed that that results was a copy of numbers with this extension method applied well, to it. Results is just going to be a list of its own. Yeah. No. No. See, okay. Cool. It's not a list. It's All an right. enumerable. All right. And that's the cool thing because. See, it's an enum enumerable event. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about that is that I can mutate the original list that this results was generated from after I defined results. So that now results actually goes through and when it iterates over numbers, it does this, it's called deferred execution, where this where clause isn't actually being executed until this line. Okay. This where clause waits until it hits a for each and then says, okay, I have to execute. So take all of the values that are inside of the list that we're attached to at that time and then start going through stuff. There are a few things in this world as nice as being right for the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I was over here and just kind of smiled and was impressed when uh, Zach actually listed off what was going to be uh, echoed out to the console or printed out to the console. I was like, wow, how in the heck did he know that? Because <laughs> he's right. 
<laughs> but yeah, I, I was because right. this usually gets people that are yeah. new to this because they look at it like we we evaluate and execute line one. Okay, so we now have numbers being defined as an integer list containing these values. We look at uh, the next line and we say, okay, we've now evaluated uh, results, and so now we have a case where results is holding one, two, three, and four. And th th that was the thing because I had originally thought we were doing the same thing we did in the last episode where we were basically building one list and then using that list to construct a second list and then printing out the results of that second list. It right. never occurred to me that there would be a problem with adding another value to the end of numbers and then having that executed because you're only digging through your for each statement after you've run that numbers dot add, which technically is right, but I just it hadn't occurred to me yet. The way that the way that Nelson had put that. The fact that the where clause from uh from your link statement was actually going to kind of wait in the wings until it was called upon by a for each. Right, there you go. That's the key thing. And the cool thing is, is this, the uh, because remember that I said link is applied to I enumerables? Mm -hmm. Where, although where is an I enumerable, it isn't a collection, but because it's an I enumerable, I can still do link stuff to it. So I could also do dot where again. And uh, one quick note is in the previous video, I did not use single letter lambda arguments, though I commonly do. Sure. And so just a quick note, and that's a kind of a style sort of thing is because these, these expressions are so small and they're encompassed by what behavior they express, there's really no need to create a well descriptive argument name. I've been using I for my loops and for in statements in Mel forever, so it didn't even throw me off. Um, I, it's kind of terrible though, because I haven't really defined a, I'll use I, I'll use X, I'll use sure. whatever sure. You know, comes to mind. And usually I'm very, very opinionated about these sort of things, but whatever single letter is closest to my index finger, I'll type. <laughs> oh yeah. You did just make that sound like a bad habit. Nicely done. Okay. So then you can do this and now we get one. Right. And again, this is only executed one before each is run. Okay. So yeah, so that's that's the where clause. And I want to step back for a second and talk a little bit about functional programming. Mm -hmm. Just really quickly. First off, any function that takes a function or returns a function is called a higher order function. So where is a higher order function? That's just the terminology thing. It doesn't actually you know impact anything. It's just this is a higher order function. If you ever hear that term, that's what it means. Because it takes in a function itself? Yes. Okay. Um, next thing is that there are two main types of link higher order functions. And in general, two main types of functional programming sort of concepts. And that is the map and the reduce. And right now we aren't doing neither. But I'll give you an example of a map real fast. I'll type it out and then I'll explain what it does. Although you might be able to infer it from uh, what you see. So do you think you can kind of infer what's going on here? Well, results is numbers dot select let me just let me stare at it for just a second uh, I plus 10 are you got well I don't want to say that you're just going to be adding 10 to each number but then I kind of do want to say that and so no I can't really move your mouse back over select for Zach thank you projects each element of a sequence into a new form yep take a look at your uh, your funk Before the funk that was going to be used was just i is less than five. No, I'm just talking oh. about the okay. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, right there inside the definition. So right. So what's being returned from this funk? Declaration. Yeah, looking in, at the declaration there. What's being returned? An integer. Okay, good. Where with where what was being returned? A boolean. A bull. So where this is the case. Can so. you say boolean if it's a bull, or do you have to say bull? 
Because it, bool, uh, bool is short for Boolean. The actual type that the keyword bool map, maps to is system.boolean. Okay, so I can say Boolean. Yes. All right, so it's going to be returning an integer type. It's also taking in an integer as well. Okay. So if this is returning an integer type, see, it's... You're closer. You're closer. Relax. I'm cool. I'm cool. It's just I always try to take, you know, whatever the name of something is and try to associate it with the real world. It was a lot easier with where because you're. it's just like saying in the real world, where this is less than that, and we're setting it equal to, but with select, Nelson, that's another, a little vague. Another idea, and I and I apologize for asking you to do this uh, often, but uh, I it just helps those I think that are new to to being able to visualize what's going on. But if you type out a quick uh, method, yeah, I think Zach's going to be able to get a a very quick grasp of what's taking place. So that lambda mm -hmm. is that expression that he's highlighting now is the exact same thing oh. as up there. And the first thing I was going to say was that our respond well our results should be what 11, 12, 13, 14 and 16. See the funny thing is you were right and you were wrong at the same time on yeah. your initial on your initial idea. Yeah. Um you were right because yes, that is what result is going to return. It's going to return 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. Right. But you were wrong in that results, this select statement does not mutate numbers at all. Right. Uh, is it just like where, where it's just going to kind of sit there and wait until we go to our for each? Yep. Okay. And in addition to it, these items that are being dumped out, these are new special items that are being mapped. That's where the map comes in. Now, They're let me, being let, let me throw this out there real quick. Hang on. Before, before I lose track of this question. Um is this going to be true of all of these link statements that they're just kind of defining some sort of behavior that's not going to be utilized until you start walking through whatever this uh, list or enumerable is? Many of them are. Okay. Not reduces, and but many of them are, yes. Okay. Just to kind of mentally prepare myself for the kind of activities we're going to be performing with link. Right. Okay, so this, uh, do, you, do you kind of understand what's going on here? We are defining this special pointer okay ignore the fact that pointer means something in a lot of yeah. different languages yeah okay just blank that out of your mind sure results Done. Is a to each one of these items mm -hmm. and as we call as we chain together these methods we are adding in these special behaviors that are applied to the pointer like a lens we're applying a lens to look at each item in a different way. Right, and the the place where my brain went the very first time we started looking at it when we were still on the where was that results would be holding, uh, results itself would have, uh, in the first case, it was one, two, three, four, or that in this case, results would actually have 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16. Results doesn't really contain it. Right, right. What results is going to do is just sit there until the for each actually fires and calls on it, and then results will hold 11, and then the next time the for each runs, it will hold 12. The next time it will hold 13 and 14 and 16. Results really doesn't hold anything. Okay. It results returns into okay. item. All right. So, all right. So, but when when the, each item comes from here and gets stuffed into here, mm -hmm. I mean this in statement is where the lenses that we define these these uh, these extension methods get executed, and as the number from here comes into here, comes into here, everything we define on results gets executed in which case it'll be this. So the first item in the for each loop is one. So we have one in results. And as we translate that results into item, the select behavior fires. And the select behavior says, call this lambda. And this lambda says, add 10 to whatever we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then so that one gets turned into 11, it gets turned right here. Results never, ever, ever contains anything. Yeah, that's throwing me off because it's a variable and it's being set equal to something. And so in, in my head, my brain just defaults back to because you've just defined it as a variable, it's going to hold some value because that's what that's what they do. Right. But in this case, in this case, we're not holding okay. variables. We're holding behavior. And that's a very functional concept mm -hmm. that I have to get into. <clears throat> but we're holding this operation in instead of actual data. Okay.
So you kind of understand? I do kind of understand. The, I mean, I, I understand how it's working, and I understand the results it should have. It's this this really uh, fundamental conceptual idea of it not of results not really holding a number and instead holding that behavior. I mean, I understand what you're saying, and no part of it is necessarily confusing. I'm just saying that I'm not used to thinking that way in terms of a variable. When the funny thing about it is, at least in this case, and I'm sure there's going to be cases where it's not, uh, it's not going to be true, even thinking about it in terms of actually holding a number, the result you come up with in your head still reflects what you see from the actual program. Which, which right. unfortunately, that makes it a little, that goes back to it being confusing. Because it's like, if results really did a, a hold a number, like, let's just say, uh, just if, if, okay, and I realize, I'll just go ahead and say in case anybody's listening and actually paying attention to what I'm saying right now, that this is the wrong way to look at it. But if the first time the for each statement ran, results really did hold the value 11 in this case and then the second time it really did hold 12 and then 13 and 14 and 16 you'd still get the same result but it's but it, it does. doesn't and so and uh, that's all i'm saying is that gets a little bit fundamentally confusing if you're not used to thinking about variables in that sense in the sense of holding behavior instead of just only some sort of a value because in this case it works either way. You still get the same result. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And and then just to bring these two examples together, are you pretty confident that this this should you... this should return your right line should contain. 11, 12, 13, 14, and then stop. Yep. And exactly. again, I mean, I'm just, I'm slowly reminding myself, I'm shifting my head back over to when we go through our four each, uh, that is, uh, we go to item in results where results is just really more than anything containing this behavior that's being performed on the numbers list. Yep, exactly. And it is a bit mind bending, but. It's it really like yeah. It takes a second only because you see things like var results equal something, and I, it's just it's just where I come from uh, in in the land of Mel. If you define a variable and you set it equal to something, I mean, you always think of it like it's storing some sort of a value as opposed to a concept, which is kind of what you're writing now. Right. You're you're, yeah. you're sticking behavior. In but there. you're yeah you're you're starting to see interesting things now with .NET, where you're used to just. A, a type holding something specific and, and tangible in your world. Of Very concrete. A float, an mm -hmm. integer, sure. a string. Well, we it, we expanded that with holding a generics. Um, generics or holding a a reference to a method. Mm -hmm. So with delegates. So now it's a variable that is what? Oh, it's holding a method. It's holding that method over there yeah. that we can call about. So now we're holding a behavior. Mm -hmm. So you're just seeing that uh, some really cool things that we can store mm -hmm. in variables. Yeah. And this this will I mean uh, once once it really really clicks I mean your perspective on programming will change and I guarantee that I think that, that oh go ahead sorry 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 well in that in that you think about your 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 software as a collection of pure concept mm -hmm. than data that's been mutated and that's what's beautiful about it. I think the only thing that was throwing me off and taking me a second to really sink the concept in is that visually, in terms of the syntax and what's being written out, it looks exactly like something you would write out to store a value at first glance. And so, if you if you come into it from that world, it does get it is a little disorienting because I mean, it looks like it was written in order to store a value, and you've got to think about it in a different way. And there's no clear indication on the screen aside from just knowing that dot where or dot select happen to be link. Uh, behaviors, link functionality. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing outside of seeing those to tell you that you're not really storing a quote unquote value, that you're storing a quote behavior. You just kind of have to know. So that's that's one of those things where it just helps to to understand link and to know what it does, what it's there for. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I look at the awesome indentation. Oh, all right, fine. Get rid of it. <laughs> oh, come on. Look at you getting all clever and stuff. 
I don't know. I, I, I know we've t- said this about three times, but I just want to do this just to uh, bring it. I'm not complaining. I, I see what you're doing. You're actually turning these into visible method bodies. Yep. That will actually tell us. It will say something. I have a syntax there. there. All right, sweet. So we are going to say Go ahead and, and again, line 24 real quick, or 25. By the what? 25. Uh, line 25. It's going to need a Terminator. There you go. Oh. Um, again, I'm going to do the uh, string dot format thing, so don't flip out. Please. No, th- there's not much to that. That's easy. It's just, I love resharper. You just use type, and then you hit the key combination, and it does exactly what you want to. Okay. So this is going to show you something interesting. Mm-hmm. That we're not printing things like where and select before we see woe before the for each. You're you're just illustrating the fact that those printing. those link statements are only running and only doing something because we're calling them in the for each. Yeah. And um, I lost the window, and I can't. You know, he, 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 he just, just closed it. it. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say pull it back over for him. So, and the cool thing is, is we're the first thing we're doing is we're hitting one. Mm-hmm. We're doing the, and then we're doing select, and we're printing eleven. Where it's like. And then we get to six, we do the where, the where does not trigger, so the select does not trigger, and then we hit the end of the enumeration. Yep. And that's, that's just a way to visualize it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool, like personally. But yeah. Okay, so that's dot select is an example of a map. A map is a higher order, or it's not necessarily a higher order function, but. I guess it can be. In this case, it is. Um, a map is a function that takes a collection, or I'm going to call them sequences, and that's a, that's used in F sharp. And the reason I'm calling it sequence is because a sequence could mean a collection or an enumerable. And I don't want to say collection because it's not a collection; it's an enumerable. So I'm going to say sequence instead to kind of to kind of differentiate this from everything else. If that's okay, mm-hmm. you won't see sequence anywhere in C sharp, but it's the idea of that. That I'm trying to express. Anyway, so we um, a higher or a uh, a map function is a function that takes a sequence and returns a sequence that has the exact same amount of items in it as before. So this is a map because dot select takes a sequence which is numbers, mm-hmm. and then it returns a sequence which is results that contains one, two, three, or it doesn't contain, but it contains the same number of things in it? it it could point to it could be enumerated to one two three four or six this amount it's the same amount you're applying you're mapping each of these values into something different and that's what a map is okay and i believe select is the only map uh the only link function that you could call a map the next one is a reduce. So is it using select like in this in the form of like choose? So like you're choosing each item that is less than five in this case so that you can do something to it? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I really confused you right now. The reason this actually wasn't what I intended to type. I intended to type that. Oh, okay. But the reason why this <laughs> works yeah. is that I'm selecting I smaller than five. So if you want to print this, it'll be kind of interesting. True, 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 false. Okay. So I'm not filtering anything. I'm just selecting what right. what the activity is. And that was a complete accident, but sorry about that. No, no, no. Okay, so this is, a ma- uh, this is an example of what you would call a map. A reduce, on the other hand, and there's a bunch of these. Um, I'm going to do max. Max is, is an example of a link function that reduces. And... A reduce is a function that takes a sequence, in this case numbers, and returns a single item. Mm-hmm. 
And it's important to know that this is not deferred execution. Dot max will enumerate numbers and will return instantly. And you see, it's not even enumerable in the first place, so this is invalid. Now, is there any it's way to know which of these are uh, will do deferred execution and which ones don't, or is that just something where you need to read up on it? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, there's there's no uh, a, a way to know just based off the name, mm -hmm. but if you look at max, it goes okay. You see that max returns an int. And that is only a single value. And if it returns a single value, then it will not be deferred executed. However, select returns an enumerable. Okay. Because it returns an enumerable, it will be deferred. Okay. So enumerable kind of designates the deferred behavior? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Math will execute right there. Um, if I were to do numbers.add. Five thousand. I will just get six mm -hmm. because it's executed right at that moment, and this is just a normal variable that you're used to, right. and it's not any magic or anything. So we have max, and um, max can take a uh, a function, but that's only useful when you're working with more advanced objects, which I plan to show in a second here. But we have max. We have min, mm -hmm. which does the same thing as max, except for it's from min. Uh, min. Um, we have average, which, I mean... These are all these doing are... exactly what you imagine they would. Like, max would basically, in this case, return 6, min would return 1, and average would return... I'm not even going to take a guess off the top of my head. Yeah. And then we have count, which is pretty self-explanatory. It returns how many items are in this Be list. And some change. And he... he... Here's the problem with count. Um, I don't want to go over generics and enumerables to the depth that you would completely, or someone would completely understand them, mm -hmm. because I would take forever. Okay. But know this, count has a performance issue because how it works is it will loop through every single item in this to find out when it stops. Okay. So if you have 200 billion items in your list count will and count internally will run 250 billion times right or 200 times. so there is a performance implication when working with count um so there what, is uh, and i understand count is basically a way i mean to me in my head that uh, pops back in my head like the size command in mel where you can return the size of an array in this case, the size of the list, is there an... Uh, this may be wildly off topic, and so feel free to smack he's, my hand. <clears throat> he's, he's actually showing you. <laughs> okay, gotcha. But yeah, there's a non-link version. Ah, uh, okay, it's got a non-link version. Uh, how do you know which one you're going to be using? Well, I mean, if you look at this one, this is systems.collections.generic.list.count. Mm -hmm. And this is... Um, well, it's not going to tell me. Okay, well, you're just going to have to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not particularly you can see that it's, it's an extension method. Yeah, it is. It is. So, okay, I mean, in, in this case, in the, in the case of using Visual Studio here, it would just be a question of which one you click on. And the fact that it's using. an I enumerable as mm -hmm. well. Actually, I have to go to MSDN for one quick second because there is one instance where the extension method is built in to use count the actual property on one specific um, on one specific uh, collection it will actually defer back to count and it's not okay i collection so i kind of lied back then um, because i do it all the time a, because this is a list link is smart enough to know that because list implements i collection and I collection contains a count, it will defer directly to this. Okay. But that's only a special case that they actually, in their implementation of link, they said, if this is an I collection, then do that. But if you're working with other kinds of I enumerables that don't have that special behavior, then it will enumerate over everything. Okay. And I would have brought that up. I just completely forgot. So sure. sorry. Is there a way to force it to use one or the other? Uh, just by calling it. Because this, this will call that property mm -hmm. explicitly. This will call that method. Ah, okay, thank you. 
That's okay. what I. It's the syntax, man. That, that's what <laughs> makes it sink home for me. <laughs> okay. And um, any, any accepts a. Um, well, actually, any. This is a funny thing. You know how I just said count mm -hmm. um, is evil and will destroy you. Mm -hmm. um, let's say we wanted to say if we, if numbers dot count is greater than one. So, like I said, if this is a huge I enumerable and it does not have an I collection implementation, this will take forever to execute. Right. What you can do instead is use the any method without supplying a predicate. Now, any will determine whether a specific sequence contains any elements. And if you do not supply a predicate, any will return true if there are one or more elements in your array, in your, in your sequence or I, I enumerable. And it will return false if there are zero. And the reason why this is faster than using count is greater than zero is because any will look at the first item, say, is there one item here? If there is, return true. Otherwise, return false. It's not going to loop through the entire thing, get the entire count, and then compare it to zero. So that's one little trick about any. But uh, to get on back on topic, any can also take a predicate, which is the func of i, uh, which is the func of uh, int pool, which you see right here. Mm -hmm. And I can pass in just like where I can say if are any greater than five. And this will return a bool. So results is now actually a bool. And you should see true. Because right. there is something in there that is greater than five. Right. And you can do any sort of thing that you want to do with this. You can break it out into a huge method if you want to. I do like how most of these can actually be read out in English. Yeah. It's it's this is the most elegant .NET library that I have ever had experience with ever period. So okay, so then there's all. Seems it's not really um, all doesn't just like any supported one with zero arguments. All does not have that overload. It requires a predicate, and that predicate is going to say if all are greater than five, return true. Otherwise, return false. In this case, it's going to be false because all are not true. Um, what else do we have? Those are the ones I use the most. There's some more advanced ones like uh, grouping and joining. Oh, there's also a. Here we go. First, first is another reduced function, so it is not deferred executed. First could either take uh, nothing, in which case it literally will return the first item, or it can re accept a predicate. Like the first that is greater than three. Yeah, the, or yeah, the first that is greater than three. Now we'll return the first. The four. interesting thing about or four, yeah. The interesting thing about first, and this is important to know when you're choosing which method to use, is that first will fail if it doesn't find anything. So watch this. Crunch. Bam. Okay. Sequence contains no matching element. But it's often desirable to be able to not have it crash and burn when there aren't any items. So that's why there's a first or default. First or default will return the default of your data type, which for reference types, for classes, that would be null. For uh, like an integer, that would be zero. So because it didn't find anything greater than 10, it returned a zero instead of throwing an exception. Gotcha. Um, then now, there's last. You, here's just a random question, only because you sort of brought that up. I mean, I realized that in that case, it's throwing out uh, the zero because that's the default of the data type kind of like a fallback. Is there a way that you could specify your own? Um, like, let's say if, if it was going to, to throw an exception like it would here, could you say, you know, if in this case, could we go ahead and set the default uh, to seven? Uh, just random number. Yeah, I could if I broke this out into two. Can't do that on a single expression. But um, you can't do that in, implicitly. You can't do that with this functionality. Okay. And it's totally cool to to smack me verbally and say say on topic, because uh, I will ask random questions that, that pop yeah, up. Yeah, right. that's great. But um, yeah. By the way, you can get the defaults of any data type by doing it using the default keyword. Ah. So default int will always return zero. Oh, nice. And, and so and default reference type will always return null and everything like that. So then there's last, which behaves just like first, so it's not even worth talking about, and it also accepts a predicate. 
or can accept a predicate. There's last or default, which works just like first or default, except for with last last uh, last behavior. Then there's single, and single is really cool. I especially use this when I'm working with databases because single will return one element if there is one. Otherwise, it will throw an exception. So if there is not one item in this collection or in this enumerable... If there's anything but one item in the collection. Exactly. Yeah. And you can also supply a predicate. And this is really cool when I'm doing database stuff because let's say I want to get a page with the ID of 10. I'll use single just as a sanity check. Sure. Just to make because sure that it is exactly 10 and nothing else. Well, yeah, just to make sure that the row being returned, there's only one that has 10. Okay, right. And what the row with that ID, which would be a huge problem. Um, so, yeah, that, that again, single is a, uh, a reduce. And that really covers the basic operators that you have. Oh, and finally, we have take and skip. So watch this. Let's say we want to skip the first three items of this. So now if we go back and do a for each loop, now if we uh, do this, we will get mm -hmm. four and then five thousand because <laughs> it's deferred. <clears throat> and then there's take. Take accepts a number. And it'll only take however many you pass in. Okay. So skip three, take one, return four. We skip three, and we only grab one. Is this is this like take the first one you come across? Yep. And then this could be take two, which would four just be six. four and six. Right. And if I three, it would be four, six, five thousand. Um, so yeah, that wraps up kind of the the most basic operators that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis. But I do also want to cover some other things that are really important to know and that's mainly to list and to array so remember how i said that the uh, the results is enumerable mm -hmm. and it is just a cloud of logic that is applied to a enumeration when it is enumerated sure to list basically flattens it so is, is that going to convert what it finds in because, because of that behavior into a new list or a new array? Yep. I mean, the name kind of says it all, so I feel like I'm cheating a little. But And this would go back to closer to what I thought we were doing at the very beginning of the video before I understood that we were just storing behavior. And this would actually create our very own new list. Right, and you see that this is 4 and 6, 4 and 6. There is not 5,000 because it's flattened right here right. before 5,000 is added. And two list and two array. Array does the same thing except for instead of a array. Return. Right. These are really important because with Blink, you will find yourself doing <laughs> you'll find yourself doing some stuff that is kind of dumb, to be honest with you. And I'll show you an example of that of one of the pitfalls that you'll experience while working with Blink. I like pitfalls. Isn't that a game? Oh man, it's like the greatest ever. <laughs> if I can just get this format right, the second I have a line, I'm sure it's going to do. Oh no, it didn't. Okay, sweet. I don't know what's going on with your computer. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it's not user error. It's your keyboard, dude. It's totally your keyboard. It's it's just the lag thing, just slow latency. Our good friend, Mr. Latency. <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm just going to do a, I'm going to do a map instead. Like I said, the lag's really uh, showing up now. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do a select. Now we're going to iterate over this twice. And we're going to do console dot right line. Next pop. Pops up along my line now, right? So, do you understand what a thread that does, by the way? I am only going, I, can, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. I can just only 
pull from context? Is it kind of like a delay? Yep, delay for this amount of milliseconds. Okay, yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to actually reduce this into uh, two. And this thread.sleep is simulating a long-running operation. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen in this program? Wheel? Uh, let's see. For each one. Now, I believe you told me that select is going to be delayed. So, which in this case doesn't yeah. matter because we took out a lot of that um, extra additional behavior anyway. So it almost really doesn't matter. So it's going to wait a thousand milliseconds or basically wait a second and then it'll return 11 and print that actually what it's going to print completely is for each one and then it'll print 11 and then it'll print 12 there will be a second delay in each one okay and then what do you think um, and then we get down here and then for each two bar item in results we're still in results doing what we were doing a second ago we're waiting our one second and then returning 11 and 12 and yep. you're waiting for a key to be pressed when you're finished? Oh, yeah, that's just there. That's okay. Just... All right. Okay, so you can... Uh... And this is really important to know that your, your stuff right here is not cached. Okay. This is going to be executed every time you enumerate results, every time. So when I do it here and then I do it here... This code is going to be executed again. So if you have a long running operation here, your best bet would to be to the first thing you do after you get all of your behavior added to it, if you need to access this more than once, flatten it up there. So watch this. So I'm flattening this right after the call to select. Yeah. Instead of <clears throat> these. So watch what happens instead. We wait two seconds and then boom. Right. Because you've recorded it out the first time and then you're just referencing that recording. Yes, exactly. It's kind of like taking the time to write it down and then just reading it off the list. I understand. Okay. And that's going to be, and this is something that you'll, you'll always have to pay attention to while writing link is how long will my logic take to execute? Mm -hmm. And if I'm more than once, should I flatten it before using it? Okay, so is there anything you you might want to ask or anything that wasn't clear? Everything was extremely clear. I didn't find myself really getting all that confused at all. I think really the big thing that I've drawn from this is that it would be most important to sit down with the functions that are within Link and read through what they're capable <clears> of. Because I, I think without that, you I mean, you've got like a cool library of stuff, but you just don't know what's in the library until you play with it. I'm really surprised that you haven't asked, well, why is this so important? Couldn't I have accomplished everything with just... <clears throat> with just stepping through? How, how <clears throat> far reaching is Link's implication in the world of data? What, what, why do we need it? I, do, you, do you see what I'm hinting at, Nelson? Yeah, exactly. Well, why, why do we need it? I mean, I, I when you first started showing all of the, the different functionality buried within the link library, I saw it all as being remarkably useful so, so, so that you didn't have to write specific code to handle all of that stuff. So well, here's, a, here's a different way I want to put it, just so that somebody out there is not looking at this thinking, well, why would they go through adding all of this extra functionality, this thing called link, just so that we can easily you know select or pull things out of out of our arrays or our lists mm -hmm. um is, is that it is it just a simplify typing and the and the answer is no it has a much um a much further far-reaching implication of uh of it in use okay i'm going to introduce a new syntax as a part of this example so don't freak out on me Zach. Ah! sorry um, we're doing just the normal array stuff. Yeah. But check this out. You're gonna like. You might like this. A little object know. initialization. Couple of properties. <clears throat> it's because you type. Yeah, you're. You're. There you Slow go. Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> it's that lag.
Okay, so this is a really cool little syntax that I'm demonstrating here. And I, uh, well, first of all, I actually introduced two while you weren't looking. Um, do you understand this just- A getter and a setter on a property? Yeah, yeah. this is just a way to do it. Um, I can use some resharper magic to sh show you exactly what it looked like if I typed it out. Mm -hmm. It would look like that, but I just like doing that. Just letting cleaner. the compiler handle creating the getter and setter. Right, you. that I've actually been exposed to enough times to know what it looks like and know what it does. This is the uh, implicit array initialization syntax that you've already seen. Mm -hmm. This is the object initialization syntax, and it's a beautiful thing because you can sit here and declare all of your objects without having to create intermediary variables or call repeatedly call dot add and then do var person equals new person person dot first name equals blah person dot last name equals blah person dot sure. age equals blah. and you can do it by supplying these little brackets. At this point, once you supply brackets, these uh, the default constructor uh, parens are no longer required. Mm -hmm. So you can just nuke those. And then you can supply a common delimited list of attributes and values, or properties and values. Right. So right. first name equals Nelson, last name equals Nelson, and so on. And I'm just going to fill this up with a bunch of stuff. Um, OK. Let's say we wanted to get the oldest person out of this list, Zach. How would you do it? We need to be able to query the specific age property on each object, but for Ooh, even, even without saying anything else, I like the fact that you said query first of all. Now, it, even before we do that, we've got to start marching through the list itself. So, <clears throat> I think in in terms of map reduce. Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 that's easy. I, I know that we'd be looking for max, and we'd have to be talking specifically to the age. It's the syntax to get us into the list, talking specifically to the age property that I'm a little fuzzy on. But I know that we'd, we need to be talking to the, uh, the max functionality inside of link. Right. And so we're going to do that. We're going to map and then reduce. Okay. So just people dot select which maps and we're going to do p and select doesn't show up because i uh moved you're not using See, link okay if, if anything's grayed out because of a sharper i have this kind of mental thing where i have to delete it uh -huh. sharper told me to it actually got so bad that i actually added a system dot link to my list of ignored um <laughs> namespaces so it never grays out in resharper so I want to accidentally delete it. But yeah. Okay, so now we have link again. So we're going to map people into age. Okay, I dot age. All right, that that was the, the missing link. Bam. I mean, how, how elegant, how beautiful is that? It makes perfect sense to me. Like, like I said, I just hadn't considered taking the iterator and adding dot age to it to make sure that I was talking to that i also uh, just to be honest at this point in the in the game hadn't considered using a link statement twice to use dot select and then dot max and and before you go on any further nelson i do want to just toss this out there so you can work it into the things you're saying but when i when i'm talking about far reaching implications of this i'm talking about uh different data sources and and you oh. Link to objects, link to to entities, to link mm -hmm. to SQL, link, link to XML, to data sets, to JDO.net. I mean, it's it's far greater than just linked to objects as we've been looking at pretty much here. And it's exactly. and it's all just it's it's unified. It's just this unified programming model that we can use for querying data. Right. But it's it's standardized when using link. So be it where Nelson said something earlier that was, I thought, key. He just didn't expand a little bit on it when he said when he's looking for a particular ID, when he's looking through a, uh, a data set mm -hmm. um, or records in a database. Uh, so I just I really wanted to make sure people understand that with Link, the power is is what you're seeing here can be applied to a lot of different data sources, which is where things really get awesome because – because you've unified the way you're going to go about querying data from a database, from an array of objects, mm -hmm. from a list of objects, etc. Exactly. And 
that comes into even more advanced functionality of Link. Um, the, the, the neat thing about Link is that right now you, we have funks, but if we were working with the database, we would, if we were working with the Link to N Hibernate, Link to Entities, or Link to SQL, um, or Link to Subsonic, or Link to, there's almost every ORM has one. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to be a funk, this would be an expression. And the cool thing about that is when you when you use expressions, and I'm not going to go into expressions right now, but expressions actually allow you to introspect the source code of what you're trying to do so that these ORMs could look at your C-sharp code and build a SQL query out of it that is completely optimized to what you want. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, and I've written enough SQL queries, just a few, but I mean enough to know how powerful that could be. Right, and so you talk in C-sharp, <laughs> but... But it gets translated over to a SQL query. Right. And, and it's, just, it's just awesome. But going back to what, to answer your question is, is when you know Link well enough to be able to use it intuitively on your day-to-day -day code, you will use it so much and it will save so many four or five lines of codes or codes. <laughs> awesome. Save five lines of codes. Let's just go with it. No, I, I can't go with that. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I can't stand that. I, I'm sorry. But no, um, it'll save so You'll have these instances where it saves five lines of code or six lines of code or three lines of code. But if you do it so often and it is more readable, it's more accessible, it's easier to change, there's less code, it adds up. It really, really adds up. And the reason I'm so excited about Link is I don't even think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just how I write C-sharp when I need to query over a, a array of objects like this. I just, I, I think of the problem in terms of C-sharp and I write it in, you know, less than one line of code. I mean, what is that? Like 20 characters, 30 characters? I don't know. Yeah, not much, yeah. Not much indeed. And, that, and that's the thing. And yeah, that's just kind of what, <laughs> what I wanted to say. I wanted to plug Link a little bit there is that you might look at it and say, oh, this, is stupid because this only shows you one possible, you know, weird edge case. But the thing about Link is that it's, there's so many building blocks, you can construct any edge case out of it. And that's just one of those things that will come as you start to use it, so. And the, the last thing is people might have noticed who have seen Link before, might have seen the fluent query syntax. And I have, purposely stayed away from the fluent query syntax because um, essentially all the query, uh, fluent query syntax does is turns into this. The C-sharp compiler takes that and turns it into this. So this is ultimately what's being executed. But let me give you an example of what a fluent query would look like. Let's say I wanted to get um, people older than 200 equals <clears throat> from person in people where person dot age greater than 200 select the person so anything about that Zach I think it's very easy to read it looks much more like what you're used to that's for standard yeah, SQL. That's, yeah it's exactly what I'm used to seeing in SQL that's not even all that different than the kind of stuff I've been scripting forever. I mean, not conceptually. Yeah. And it almost writes out a, like an English sentence. Yep. And this, the query syntax is pretty powerful. So don't like, you know, um, think that it's just some little toy that they threw in to make, you know, people more a able to adopt a link. Mm -hmm. It is really powerful, but it ultimately does compile back into those chain method uh, invocations. So this turns into uh, people dot where person dot age is greater than 200 dot select and then an empty select. So it probably won't even admit that because it's just selecting person. Right. But if I wanted to get people's first name, right. I could exactly. do select. Because right. now, now you're reaching into a property. Exactly. So? So the let's see, the actual... <clears throat> I'm going to try to write this out. So if we did, did the same thing, now, do I still know the, the comment syntax here? Uh, I mean, it, yeah. it looks like a start. All right, so if I was going to write it in the, the one-liner 
style that we've been working with up to this point. Uh, people's first. See, I type just as well as you do, and I'm on the native machine. How awesome is that? Older than 200, equal, not minus, but actually equals. I'm writing it and typing at a really odd angle. Maybe that'll help. There we go. Uh, so let's see. Um, I'm just, I'm taking a total stab at it. See if I actually learned anything here. So if I screw this up, then uh, I just screwed it up. No big deal. Oh, sure. People. No. Um, wait, yes. Dot. Where? And let's see where. Now, hang on. This is where we got to get all fancy. You could use person if you wanted there, but I, I yeah, but actually I kind of like I see what you're saying when you use just like a, a random letter for the iterator. But you're right, we could say this. Right, but I, I definitely always use a single letter. Yeah, well, I especially because person has already kind of been specified at some point in the code. Uh, it hasn't really. Well, I mean, okay, so IntelliSense picked it up and started trying to give me suggestions for it, and if I just use I, I don't get that. So it's one less point of confusion for me to have to deal with. So let's see where. Person. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. Yeah, that that's actually Nelson. That's good though. I'm, yeah, I'm... let me blow sh stuff up and then. Yeah, let him let him blow it up. Let me blow it up and then uh, yeah, it'll it'll be fine. Because this is going to solidify the concept of lambdas for Zach. Yeah, exactly. See, it can, and you got to type it. Unfortunately, you can't just like watch somebody type it fifty times, and then because what I've got to write here is going to be my expression. Um, to check yes. and see if people if the age is greater than yes and so yeah. i'm trying to remember the syntax to do that exactly you have to ask yourself something how do i get to the age so good nelson so all right good. all right yeah 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 hang on well i got to i got to get down to people and then i've got to step down well See, and this is where it gets frustrating because I need the actual age of the persons within people. Nah. It's all good. This this is good. Okay, yeah, I I fell off. I fell off the truck. All right. All right, take a look at um your pop up. Sure. Look at funk. What it's gonna take in a person and it'll return a bool. Now how do you read the uh, lambda operator? I goes into so people So what is I? What will I be? I will actually be my individual person. Won't there I? you go. So now I goes into here. So this would be... Ah, no, no, no. No, it's good. It. You take in I. That means you can work with I inside the method. See, but... You can work with I inside the method. Pretend that's a method you're now writing the body for. This No, this is really good. You can sigh all day long. I don't care because this is this no, 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 no. I, I don't mind being frustrated. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just, it's just a natural response. Yeah, it's just it's, no. All right, may I? It's so a must. If you were writing out the, oh wow, yeah, that is some weird stuff there. So if we were going to, and so taking a look at this again, and you're going to be sending in a person. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're returning. What were we returning? A bool. With where? Aren't we returning a bool? That's me. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So we're going to say static bool, and we'll just call it um, get old people. <laughs> there you go. And then if I was to say take in a person, and I'll just call it P. If down here I want it to work with the person I just sent in, how am I going to refer okay, so to it? Okay, so should this just be I dot age? <laughs> Outstanding. That's why I did that, because that's that's what it means by goes to. I goes into here now. Okay. So now if you no, say, no 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 no, 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 no. Nah. I was typing. I was typing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then that's that's what I had. I'd Look, wait, well, that no, was no, awesome. That, that's what I had already fallen off the truck about. Was I just forgotten? I suppose that whatever this is named, and I should just name it whatever I want, and not fall back on something I'd already seen on the screen. Uh, so forgive me. Uh, so if we just name this anything, <laughs> I'm then... gonna sound like Nelson now. Whoa! Exactly. But I should be able to.
Go back to that and then say dot age. But now here, do this for me. Back all the way back up. Is gr and, and get rid of gooseball. Yeah, just get rid of the first gooseball. Just this one. Okay. Or the second one. Yeah. Get rid of that and get rid of the age. Uh huh. Get rid of age. I'm fighting your delete. Get rid of your grade. All right, now now start typing gooseball. Uh huh. I'm, I just want you to see this. Now don't type anything. Read this over to the right. Parameter person gooseball. Right. Yeah. So there you go. It's. Parameter so, uh, so we person. know it's a person, and we know it c it can have an age that's right. because it's already been defined. And you. now we can say that that's greater than what did we say, two hundred? Okay, so now we've got that far. We have uh, we've narrowed down our list to only those people who have an age that's greater than two hundred. Which so up. getting a true or false back uh, with each okay. one would just be that one dude. And then we can say dot, and we need to. We're selecting at this point. Yep. And this is going to be uh, whatever we pass in. So, I mean, we could say, uh, I mean, it could still be Gooseball. It doesn't matter. I just, I liked that because it was different than I. But because I've typed it once, I'll just use I this time. And then it should just be I dot, um, which one are we looking for? First name? And then... If we terminate that, does that is that not the same thing? That is exactly. Good. Then I was able to figure that out. The only thing I just I had temporarily forgotten that as we make it to this stage, this is going to hold a person. Mm -hmm. uh, or I mean, in this case, it's going to hold whatever happens to be the next index within people, which in this case just happens to be a person. And that's why I was giving you the example with an actual method. Mm -hmm. I just right. wanted you to make the connection without me saying it right, or right, Nelson right. saying it. And you didn't have to make it all the way down, which makes me feel a little better. Uh, so yeah, I, and actually, you know what? After writing this out, I actually kind of like this better than having to write all this crap out. But And that's what, that's what and, Nelson's And that's at. a lot for me to say, because usually I like everything to look like it's been written out in very nice English tones and all that sort of thing. But honestly, the, this strangely enough, once you write it out like this, and once you understand what all the really cool symbols are doing here, it actually feels a little more concrete to me. Do you want to uh, show you something that might freak you out? Please, we'll... please. I mean, hey, I'm not, obviously I'm not scared to come up here and make a, a fool of myself. I mean, I just used Gooseball as a as a value. I mean, come on. Now, I don't uh, I don't want to actually talk about what this code is going to be doing don't because talk about it. <laughs> no, I just want to talk about how it's doing it, okay. not necessarily what it's doing. And I just want to show you one of the instances where this query syntax is actually preferable to this not query syntax. Sure. Actually, I'm going to show you two examples. One is going to be called one is going to be let and I know we're probably bad for time here, but oh, it's all good, Nelson. Take your time. First thing is gonna be let. Now, this is a bad example because it's so simple. But I mean, creating a huge object graph would be beyond the scope here. So I'm gonna say that I want to use a person. Uh, I'll just show it to you. I don't know. Full name equals. Putting in some tokens, and that'll be person dot first name comma person dot let. Okay, makes sense. Yep. So let is that just kind of like specifying a variable inside the statement, something temporary? Close, but it's not a variable. I, it's a binary. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, I I mean I have to say variable in a really, God, I oh no, no and I, I want to say I generic can't. sense, and now I'm afraid to say generic too. Isn't that great? Well, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily generic. It's what's called a binding. It's not full name is not mutable. And this is a very 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 important concept of link is that you don't want this link expression to have any side effects. Okay, so how can I say this? You are associating the term full name with the first a combination of the first and last name of each entry as you go through it. Yes, I'm binding the symbol full name into this expression, and this symbol can never have another expression within the context of this query. I cannot redefine this. Okay. It's set. It's read only. Right. But that's an important thing. And then the next thing I was going to say is that as a result of a link query, you never want to edit anything outside of the scope of the link query. So, for example, I don't know. This is legal, and you can do it, but it's bad, and don't. Can you say why it's bad? 
Uh, or is it is it one of those universal truths that you just you question your own peril because the programmers of the world you unite and burn you with a stake or something? <laughs> the, the the biggest reason is that this is deferred, mm -hmm. and this variable i could mean something completely different when this is actually executed. And although that'd be bad practice, it could happen, and you don't want that to happen. Okay. The next thing is being able to paralyze. I always have trouble with this word, so I'm gonna make myself look like a complete idiot. But um, why join you, the club? We got jackets. When you um want to paralyze this, oh, I totally nailed that one. So you want to paralyze this uh, this link query. So you want all of let's say you have four cores in your machine, and you want to run this query against. Uh, you want to run this query on four cores simultaneously. Okay. Now, if you don't have any side effects, you can do that without any problem, no collisions. But the second you have a side effect, the second you are editing something, this something is now editable in a context above it, which is then brought back into the context below it, which would cause race conditions in your code. And that gets into multi-threading. But there is an actual reason why you want this to remain pure. I mean, I understand vaguely what you're talking about. But I don't think we need. I don't think we need to get the explanation deep enough where I understand completely what you're talking about, because we'd be here for another six hours probably. Okay. So okay, this is a binding, a let binding. Mm -hmm. So I'm binding this expression to the symbol, and now we can I still use think it. It looks like a variable. It looks like a variable, but it's read only. It kind of behaves like a variable too. I mean, if you think about it. But it's like a variable, but it's read only. Yeah. It I'm just like a variable. I'm just saying, you know, looks like a variable, kind of acts like one, smells like one. But it's not a variable, and I understand that. Okay, so you see that now I can represent this expression mm -hmm. or rep multiple times. And this is useful when you want to do something incredibly complicated right here, but you need to use this result 10 different times in your link. So you don't want to have to type that complicated line of code out multiple, multiple times throughout the rest of your query. And you cannot do this with the uh, extension method syntax. Okay. It's just impossible. Yeah. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about was, oh yeah, Our, uh, Cartesian products. So watch this. Oh my god. I'm having a serious problem. You gotta type in March time, man. I guess I should go stop all those downloads upstairs. <laughs> Are you downloading WoW? Again. The most recent patch. What's a big patch? Okay, check this out. This is what's called the Cartesian product in that we are looping over something. And that something in itself has something we want to loop over. And that something in itself has something we want to loop over. And then we want to get something out of that result. And the cool thing is we can do where whenever we want. So we can do where asm.name, I don't know, contains .dll, which will always be true, but whatever. And then we, right here we could do where type dot namespace. I can't wrap namespace an object or string. String. And so on. So we can create really, really complicated uh, logic in this, but still have it read from top to bottom. So I'm not expecting that you understand what have domain current domain get assemblies does, or what get types does, or what get methods does, other than realize that this is returning a list of stuff we want to loop over. Mm -hmm. For every item here, we want to ignore stuff that doesn't contain .dll, sure. and then get a list of stuff that that contains, and then loop over those, apply some condition, and then get something that that contains, loop over those, and then project meth.name onto our result. Yeah, I follow that. And that is another thing that would be difficult to do with the uh, extension method. I syntax. can see that too. I think in the end, the, the single line extension method version that we've been looking at 
is just so cool because I've seen it a few times up to this point and it always kind of looks so baffling. And now it doesn't look baffling, so I feel like I know some sort of secret code that should be associated with like secret handshakes and jackets and things, and I just feel cool knowing about it. I think that's really all that is. And no, it's the Steam downloads upstairs. I'm like totally re-downloading my entire library. Oh, fantastic. Just for you. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about, Nelson? Um, what else do you... <laughs> well, I... I have yeah, one, one, go ahead. One, um, dictionaries. I just want to say one thing, and this is just going to be completely just really quick. Let's say we want to get a dictionary out of this people array mm -hmm. that he is the age, or that's a bad example. Yeah. <laughs> well put, sir. And it's a bad example because dictionaries can only contain me stuff. So let's let's give all these guys an ID. Ooh. So he has an ID of one, and then he has an ID of two. He has an ID of three. He has an ID of four. And an ID is actually an integer. Let's say we want to build a dictionary. Are you familiar with dictionaries? Vaguely. Um, Vaguely. I know that they're a lot like lists, but they're different in a few different ways. The main way that they're different is they associate a key with a value. Okay. So let's say we wanted to get a dictionary of all these people with the key as ID and the value as the entire person object. Okay. And this gets into one of my, uh, one of the most commonly used, um, Link methods that I like, and that is two dictionary. And two dictionary wants two projections. It wants the key projection, and then it wants the value projection. It doesn't need this one if you're just doing this, mm -hmm. but I'll just do that just so it's more clear. Uh, Actually, yeah, I'm glad you did because now I see what that should be doing. So if you if you didn't have the v uh, goes into or goes to v. It would just be the person anyway. It would just. It would be implicit, but also right. I could do that. So the the dictionary, the value of the dictionary could be person. Right. If I exactly. To, but... Exactly. So and then I could do the stuff. Then ID of one, and then. Uh, First name. That's right, because the first time I ever had dictionaries explained to me, I had decided that they were a lot closer. They were probably the closest thing that I'd come across to that point to a standard Maya array, because you had the little index number that you could play with. Oh, so they were um, associative, or were you just talking about indexes like numeric, like one, two, three, four? He was just talking about um, regular indexes, one, two, three, four, etc. Because that is one, the key is one, that's the first one. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's just the cursory overview of the link methods and what they do and what they're used for and why you should use them. Well, that was fantastic, man. And I'm sure we're going to see a bunch more of this stuff and all of the uh, various topics we'll be touching on as we go forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything <laughs> else you want to add in, Nelson? No, unless Zach is, is good. No, I'm really good, man. Thank you so much. That that actually helped me out so much with what Link is and how it works and, and how we can use it. Outstanding. All right. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and bring Episode 3 of Nelson's Corner to a close. And we'd like to thank all of our member sponsors out there. And look for Episode 4 coming up soon. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>